Welcome, my peace, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It would be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peace, my peoples. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop Miami, season one, episode two. We start off with Pleasure P meeting up with Shay. And, you know, they got the both, they got the white cars parked next to each other, whatever. And Pleasure P's on his phone talking. And Shay walks up. And she was like, get off the phone. Get off the phone. Like, damn, you demanding. But, hey, we're going to meet up. You shouldn't be on the phone. You know what I'm saying? But... It could be business because he got gigs to books, book, you know what I mean? So anyways, you know, and he was like, you know, pleasure piece, just saying that he was disappointing in Shay, like, you know, her behavior, how she acted, how she not supporting the group, she's not supporting him, how she just went ham, you know, beefing with, you know, baby blue. And Shay was like, get off the phone, get off the phone. And she was like, you know, Shay's upset with him. She was like, you ain't got my back and all this other stuff. F, you know, fat boy, F the disco ball, F him, you know, his balloon looking self and whatever. And then, you know, a pleasure plea was like, his name is baby blue, a baby boy, something like that. And so, you know, um, um, what's his name? Pleasure P was like, yo, you just totally like just played yourself kind of really. And he was like, but you know what? It, you know what? I should have had your back because you know what? I should have told the guys who you were and why you were there and everything like that. That way there wouldn't have been no problem because you remember security had stopped Shay, whatever. Like they had, a, they had already picked the girls that they were going to take back with them. But, you know. Shay was, you know, standing there with security or whatever. So then it made it seem like she was a groupie, a jump off trying to get on. But ex but she was there for Pleasure P, even though she she um, surprised him when she showed up or whatever. So anyways, he said he takes accountability for that, that he should have let the fellas know who she was or whatever. And so she was like, you know, you don't, I want you to have my back. You should have my back when he was calling me names and everything. And so that's when she, and he was like, you got to say, I don't have your back. I had your back with Scrappy. You know what I mean? When he broke your heart, whatever. And she was like, well, Scrappy ain't never disrespect me like that. I'll ever have let anybody else disrespect me or anything like that. So, you know, so she is. So she's like throwing Scrappy up in his face. Like Scrappy would have never let no nothing like that went down like that. It was like, yo, why are you bringing up Scrappy? You don't bring up your ex man to your new man while you're having an argument because it's like you're comparing your old man to your new man and almost insinuating that you want your old man back and your old man your old man is better even though he broke your heart. So never bring up up your ex when you're in an argument because that just leaves the door open for a person to feel like, hey, she don't really she ain't really feeling me because they start to think and wonder oh is does she really want to be with me so anyways they make up they apologize or or they hug they kiss she got her leg up on the car like her vagina's wide open i was like shay you're doing way too much but so it is what it is so they kind of make up and they're gonna try to get back on the same track but it seems like i wouldn't if i was shay i wouldn't be all that you know, vigorous and all that angry and aggressive, especially when you moved yourself all the way out here to Miami and all of a sudden, like, day one, day two, day three, you guys are arguing and fighting. It seems like you guys didn't really have no relationship. So what's going on like that? seems like it's just very argumentative and it's coming from your side, Shay, that you don't want to support, you know, Pretty Ricky getting back together when you know that Pretty Ricky was before you and they will be there after you. So you should just get in where you fit in and have Pleasure P pay the bills and take care of you and keep you on this show and keep yourself on the show because you are entertaining. But don't make yourself, you know, look like, like you're crazy. Like, it don't make no sense. Because the situation with Pretty Ricky and Pleasure P was way before you. And it's, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, we get introduced to um, Prince. We get introduced to Prince. And he's supposed to be a big time promoter. He's trying to make his money. He's trying to take over Miami. And he has competition. His competition is Michelle Pooch. Michelle Pooch used to be the woman, used to be the thing or whatever. But she took a vacation. Now she's back. And, you know, we meet... Um, Prince meets up with his boy DJ E Freeze and and basically they're talking about forget about the girls let's focus on the money you're gonna make these millions and then they talk about DJ Michelle Pooch how you know she distanced that he was ratchet and she told him to leave her party and all this other stuff and embarrass him like he was nobody and he was like yo I get the party like y'all bring me and my girls you know at first I had 50 girls I had 100 girls I had 200 girls we turn up you know he works with you know all different types of artists <laughs> and um 
Hey, and he's a big time promoter. So it is what it is with that situation. So we see he's going to be having beef with Michelle Pooch. They're going to be going at it. And so then we get Veronica Vega. We get Mrs. Vega and, you know, and um, we get Steph. And Steph is Haitian. And um, we get, you know, what's her name? Amara. Um, basically, they show up to Vega, you know, photo shoot for her album cover. She makes music and all this other good stuff. She's an artist. She done work with Pitbull. We got Steph. She signed to DJ Khaled. And we have Amara. And she's there. She's talking to him. She's letting him know what she went through with um old or young Hollywood, how he mistreated her, how he told her that he didn't like her look and the afro and, you know, trying to change her, saying that she looked like more, instead of being Macy Grace, she needs to be more like Beyonce. Then we get Myra talking about like how hard it is, how people turn the door and her, slam the doors in her face. They, they don't think she's Spanish. They don't think she's Latina and they don't think she's this. They don't think she's that. She doesn't have the look. People, you know, she's too black. Her hair's too nappy. That's what she says. She says her hair is nappy. I don't use them terms, but that's what she said. And she was like, they want her to straighten her hair, change her look. And basically, she's sticking to her guns because she wants to be who she is. And she's letting the girls know that, you know, young Hollywood, you know, done crapped on her. And she started crying because she goes, there's always a fight. I'm always fighting to, you know, be myself, to be who I am and not change and all this other stuff. Change my look, change my heritage, change my nationality. The way that, you know, God made me, he, he gave me this hair gave me this skin color and people wants to just try to transform me and make me assimilate to what majority of society look like or to make it as a crossover artist and so then you know vega and you know steph they you know um hug amara while she's crying and you know she's really just breaking down because she's tired of trying to fight down these walls and break down these barriers because these barriers are real for her and these barriers are real for a lot of people especially when you go on job interviews you go looking for apartments you go looking for houses and they see your skin color they see your hair and they're like oh no this one oh uh, this person looks confrontation they want you to look non-confrontational that you don't really have an opinion so or when you go bike to the dealership to buy a car or whatever some people always say money talks and bullshit walks sometimes people would not want to be bothered with you with the color of your skin especially if they feel intimidated or they don't like the color of your skin so it is what it is and so they they comfort her and then we get you know um we learned that Steph, she's Haitian, and she's and she gets frustrated because people don't think she's Haitian because she's so light and all the other stuff, and she has to let people know that she is Haitian to let them know that don't play no games with me. I know who I am. You ain't gonna change me. I'm Haitian. That's it. And so then we get to Joy, and you know Joy meets up with Trina, and it's Joy's birthday. Trina is chilling. That she's supposed to be performing and doing a club um, performance or promoting at a club her and trick daddy joy shows up and joy is like oh my god it's my birthday tricks inside i haven't seen him in four years you know i just broke up with him it's over and you know i sent a divorce lawyers i sent all these people i sent a mediator like okay you send them or did you they send the letter like you can get a divorce whether trick signs it or not so anyways she's just saying that she don't know what's going on i think he she says that she thinks trick loves her she still loves trick trina was like yo what's going on you haven't seen each other in four years stop this drama Trina's like, yo, you think I just got drama with Bobby? I got drama with Joy, my cousin, because she's married to Trick Dad and they haven't seen each other in four years and they basically stay away from each other. But here tonight, they're going to be together in the same room at the same damn time and it might be a problem. But my cousin Joy needs to get rid of Trick. She needs to divorce him and move on with her life and move forward. And Joy wants, to, Joy says that she wants to move on. She wants to move forward when she tells Trina that, but it doesn't seem like she really wants to move on or wants to move forward. Forward, um, in her life without Trick so they go inside Trick was like oh my god I haven't seen this girl in like four years she done walked out on me and now she's in a club and it's her birthday I don't want to be around her I don't want to be next to her like I haven't seen her in like four years like son who, where they do that at where they do that at where you show up where I haven't seen you in four years so I, you want me to spend time with you on your birthday but at least he knew it was her birthday unless Trina told her but he's married to her so anyways, and he was like, you know, Trick is just like, he ain't trying to hear nothing Joy's trying to say. He ain't trying to hear her at all. He is not feeling it. He's just like, yo, she's bad for business. That's his time and point. She done walked out on me and she done left me. So it is what it is. <laughs> 
And so then we get to Amara. She goes home. She's she's at home. She's with her mom. Her mom feeds her basically, and she just tells her story that she's tired of her mom working so hard. You know, her feet swelling. You know, um, just working, just crazy. Like a lot of other, like everybody else, mother works hard, and but she and like everybody else wants to give their mom and their family the the American dream, whatever that American dream is for you. I don't know what it is for you, but. Um, to you know buy a house make sure she has maids she has this she has that when she when she walks in the house she sees her mom watching her performances and you know Amara's like you know I critique myself and I see myself back then and she sees how she grows but she starts to cry because she wants to give her mother a better life and she don't want her mother to work so hard she wants her mother to take it easy now because she's older she just wants her to relax but Amara feels like she can't do that right now because people want to change who she is want to change her hair want to change her look want to change everything about her not have her be proud of her heritage and whatever she's mixed with because you know um so since she is not assimilating and transforming the way that um people want her to it's, it's harder for her to kind of prosper and get deals and things like that but she did sign a multi um record deal um i did a video about it it's in my what's going on playlist so check it out hit that like button too and so she's just like you know is so much harder so much difficult because she hasn't she has her own mind she has her own brain and so um people can't easily manipulate her to change but she also says that she's open to wearing her hair different ways wearing it straight wearing weaves wearing you know extra pieces in her hair you know all types of different stuff she, she's she's open and she's willing to do that but she says it's the way that people approach her and try to make her something that she's not she just likes to she she likes her afro and you know but she'll change it up you know so anyways she's just upset that she can't help her mother the way she wants and she starts to cry she's like she gets the ugliest cry and all this other stuff and her mother cries with her too you see her mother feeding her so you could tell that she was raised right and she has morals she has values her mother raised her to be strong and to be powerful and you know um amara doesn't want to tell her mom what young hollywood or old hollywood said to her or whatever and so then we move on to gunplay with miami tip and um strawberry strawberries uh, that's a stripper name right <sighs> i remember they used to call strawberries like crackheads back in the day that's what my old school people told me so anyways they meet up at the pool place gunplay is like flitting around with miami uh miami tip miami tip it's like you know she's single ready to mingle ready to get it in with him or whatever and she don't care who he with or whatever and so she asked him if he has a girlfriend and he says yes he is in a relationship or whatever and she was like well your girl can't do this so she gets on a pool table and she starts to shake her booty and that's the type of girl that she don't want your man around but he has to have restraint he has to have restraint you know what i mean because um that's when like nope you get you get people like that that don't respect no type of relationship at all they don't care they want what they want and so gunplay was like nah so nah i ain't even trying to do that i ain't even trying to go there <laughs> and so then we get shay she's walking in the park she looks nice but why does she have that mop that toupee that clown wig on top of her head curl like that why why shay you your face looks so pretty goes so well with your body and your tone and you have that red kool-aid wig on top of your head like yo way too much like damn nobody can tell her that wig looks terrible nobody tell her that wig is played out that style's played out because shay's too pretty for all that so anyways she's chilling with michelle pooch they're exercising michelle pooch is letting her know that she's back in the game and she's back that shit she is happy that shay's here and they're gonna tear the streets up together they're gonna get it on they they gonna they 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 gonna do the damn thing basically and um it is what it is and so she's so shay top starts to tell her that hey listen i'm here for one reason that is pretty that is pretty ricky not really but it's pleasure p and you know and um uh, you know michelle pooch is just like i don't really i'm not i heard that that pretty rick is getting back together whatever and she was like and sh then shay went real nasty like oh no i don't like it i can't oh god she got and just, so you know michelle 
pooch was like, yo, why are you so salty? That's the group. That's how they make money. That's where the bag is at. Like, yo, you got to support him. Like, you better chill out, yo. Like, you love him. You want to be with him. You need to have his back. He's going to need your support. You don't go against the grain. You don't go against what's bringing him money and what is before you, basically. And then, you know, Shay thinks, okay, yeah, she's right. But, <laughs> so... The Michelle Pooch tells, you know, Shay, like, hey, listen, I got beef with this little young prince. This little young model boy came up to my party being all ghetto and hoodie and, you know, um, hood or ratchet or whatever. And and it's just, we just not the clientele. He thinks he's going to take over and he's going to have my spot. And so, mm -mm -mm. I don't know why you don't work together, but it is what it is. We need a storyline, don't we, ladies? And so, we move on from that. And we get, you know, um, so now we got Gunplay. Gunplay goes home. He's smoking sage with his girlfriend, Kiara. And he lets Kiara know that he met up with Miami Tip, which he's supposed to make music with. And she was coming on to him or whatever. And so, you know, Kiara said, what you mean she was coming on to you or whatever? I thought, you know, this is what I was talking about. This is why I didn't want to leave my home and come back to this bullshit and this other stuff. What do you mean? And she knows you got a girl. She came on to you like that. And he was like, yeah, she got on top of the table. She was shaking her ass and doing all this and whatever. And she was like, yo, I like and 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 Gunplay saying that he can continue to work with her. But he kept his dicky. He kept his dick in his dickies. And so she was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go get the bag. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to work with this one and work with that one and see what's up and bring that bag. And Gunplay was like, well, bring that bag home. And then when Gunplay did bring that bag home and he, like, smiled and shit, when he was like, okay, he totally looked like a custy. Even though Gunplay is attractive, in my opinion. He was a lot attractive, more attractive, like, a, like six or seven years ago. But shit happens to everybody, yo. Shit happens. And so, she was like, yeah, I'm going to get that. And he was like, whatever, okay, then br just bring that back. So, you know, he's focusing on that money or whatever. And, you know, when, um, what's her name? Miami Tip got on the table and was shaking her booty, whatever. Um, Kiara's booty is way bigger. I don't know if Kiara's booty is natural, but her breasts are so big. So, I'm figuring the booty goes with the breasts. So, I don't know if she got shots or she got injections or anything. But it looks natural. It's just huge. And her face goes with her body. So, I don't know. So, anyways, um, Gunplay. But Gunplay, at least, you know, he told her what happened, what went, went down. And he was like, yo, you got to be lucky. You you, 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 you got to be blessed and be lucky that I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what's going on. She was like, I got to be lucky. I shouldn't have to be lucky. You shouldn't put yourself in a situation where you got to tell me you got to be lucky. You shouldn't put yourself in a compromising position where people going to be shaking their booty and trying to get with you and be all up on you while you're in a relationship. Why would you even tempt that? It's just like sitting in a room with a bunch of dope, <laughs> in my opinion. So anyways, um, so they leave out on a bad note. So it is what it is with that situation. And so we got, um, we have um, Young Hollywood. He's having a video release party or whatever. And guess who shows up? Steph, you know, and um, Vega. They show up and they want to confront Young Hollywood or whatever. And they confront him. But Young Hollywood was like, yo, your girl be tripping. Your girl's this, your girl's that. Like, I just said, you know, she could do this and she could do that. You know, I wasn't really trying to offend her with her, with her puffs, a little afro thing that she wears. Totally disrespectful. Totally not apologetic at all. The way he described, like, oh, with her little puffs, like, or her, her afro is cute and everything. Basically, you know, demeaning her style in front of her girls or whatever. And so then he was like, yo, I'll pop. So Steph was like, apologize to her. And so he was like, I'll apologize to her if I can get a date with, you know, um, Vega. So him and Vega, they start talking and whatever. So they toast or whatever. So we seen like Vega, but when, she, but Vega seems like, you know, she ain't really feeling Amara like that or whatever. So we'll see what happens in the situation. But she seems like first she was defending Amara when it came towards, you know, Hollywood dissing her. But now she seems like she's feeling Hollywood more than a friend. You know what I mean? Like she wants to get to know him. She wants to see what's good with him and toast him with him after your girl done, done cried. And you said you never wiped nobody's tears before. I that's what we call friendship. Hey. So anyways... Hollywood is in his confessional talking about, oh, I see a one and told her friends, but I'm not going to let one bad situation screw up another situation, so I'm going to do my thing. <laughs> so he's hitting on Vega because he says she's beautiful. I guess he's on that level. So we'll see how that 
how that's gonna go down and that's kind of like crazy and kind of shady at the same damn time so anyways then we get to see that Shay is cooking dinner and being romantic and she wants to make up with Pleasure P even more because she got through talking to Michelle Pooch and then she's at home cooking broccoli got the candles going looking all nice got the flowers the roses motherfucker ain't gonna show up he ain't he's with another bitch so it seems like that Shay is going to be looking like a fool all over again I love and hip hop Miami so it's just like damn pleasure so pleasure p meets up with his girl gabby they used to go together back in the day she lives in jamaica i guess she's jamaican and and he she supported him and they was together and she just upped and left him she just said kick rocks i guess that's when the money was going low and the band wasn't performing they separated and he wasn't he wasn't hitting the charts or whatever so she was like peace i'm out and so you know uh pleasure p was like you know i told shay that i was busy something came up but i want to see what's going on with you know um with gabby and so he wants to see what happens. And Gabby was like, I want you back. She, and she was like, since Pleasure, since Pretty Ricky's getting back together, I thought we can get back together. Since she's going to be getting some coins and some ducats and you on TV, I feel like I should run through, you know, come through and pick up where we left off at. And she wants him back. And she's in town visiting, you know, her sister because her sister moved to Miami. And Pleasure P was like, we'll see what happens. And they hug like, damn, Pleasure P, you got... You got Shay moving out here and you're stepping out on her. Are you trying to see what's going on? How would you feel if Shay was doing the same damn thing? I mean, that is shady. Even though Shay is, you know, rambunctious and she gets very temperamental and she came after your boys or whatever, but she's still there in Miami for you. For you. Not anybody else but you and VH1 Checks and Love and Hip Hop Miami. So, anyways, it didn't seem real, but we'll we'll just we'll just roll with it. And a lot of the scenes didn't seem real, but we'll just roll with it. And so, um, he's going to see what he's going to get with Gabby. And it seems like he's going to be, he's going to leave Shay in the dust. And we'll see next episode when Shay finds out that he is with Gabby. And, um, Shay's going to be putting them paws on her. She's going to have to call Scrappy with them paws. Damn, that is mad shady that she and he knows that she's been hurt and he's been hurt before. So he's going to turn around and hurt her just like that on national TV. Miss me with that bullshit. So anyways, we move on from that. We get, you know, um, what's her name? Kiara. Kiara shows up with Chinese Nikki. Chinese Nikki looks just like Little Kim and um, they look like they're related. And so she shows up to the club where Miami Tip and Strawberry's at. And then she's trying to look at the competition to see what's going on. And she tells, you know, Chinese Nikki. I don't even want to say Chinese Nikki the way her eyes look. She's like a tiger. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> so anyways, moving on from that, you know, um, Kiara confronts, you know, um, Miami tip Miami tip was like I well I didn't know I didn't know if he was his main chick his side chick this one you ain't his wife he ain't married and you know what I would do it again and I didn't care if he had a girlfriend or not and that's what you know strawberry said like we don't know if you're the main one or the side one or whatever and so then that's when you know Kiara was like what well, see that's what I'm talking about whatever and then all of a sudden I don't know where we thinking that well I'm thinking that you know Kiara is is about to pop off because she said she didn't care if he had a girlfriend or not. And then you know uh, Miami Tip was like I would do it again and put him on that pool table and and I would have got on that pool table put you on a pool table got on top of you and did my thing because you I got what you want I got what you need and so and um, Kiara was like well he told me all the things you did she was she was like good I want to do something to you I want to get into them draws and so. Kiara was shocked by that and she was looking like she was turned down a little bit and she turned around and she showed her ass to Miami Tip so we see that Miami Tip and Kiara might be hooking up in the near future because that situation but you see Miami Tip knows how to handle situations she knows how to read people she is a stripper and been a stripper and but now she's in the rap lane so she knows how to read her clientele and what they want and what they need because it's all about the dollar 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 bill y'all so she like she she flirted with her and she was like she was like call me and you know Kiara's looking back like yeah okay smiling and shit 
So we'll see what's going to happen with that situation. I'm like, damn, so when we get Joy, Joy shows up to her husband, her estranged husband's house she hasn't seen in four years. And hasn't, well, she probably seen him in the clubs because Trick said that she be <laughs> everywhere that Trina be performing, she be somewhere in the crowd. So anyway, she shows up, door and opens into the door. Trick is like, oh my God, why is she here? Like, yo, you left me, you bounce. You like, you you know, like, why are you here? What what can we talk about? Like, yo, how, where they do that at? Where, like, you left me, you disappeared and all this other stuff. Now you're coming back. What can we possibly want to talk about? You walked out on me. You left the king. You left the castle. You left everything. And so... So, you know, Joy was like, yo, you didn't give me the love. You didn't give me the love. You didn't give me the respect. And you didn't give me what I needed. So I went out there. And he was like, so, yeah, I seen you posting on Instagram, posting it on Twitter, posting on Facebook, you and your bummy ass dudes. And, you know, they are peasants. Like, you know, you any dude that you're with, you got a $100,000 truck. They ain't going to pay $1,200 for some tires or something go wrong with it. And he was like, you should, you should want better than that. Riding around with these scrubs or whatever, being with these scrubs, you should want a man that's gonna respect you and do right by you. But the guys that you pick, they gonna do nothing, nothing right about you. Uh, uh, um, they don't have good intent for you, so they're not going to do right by you because they can't do right by themselves. And so Trick is just like, yo, you left, you you bounced for what reason? You ain't found the love yet. You ain't found that emotional support. You didn't find that love. You didn't find all this other stuff that you're looking at. He was like, I brought you everything. She was like, it ain't about money. It's about the love and respect. But he was like, the money helps though. The money helps a lot. <laughs> and Trick was like, yo, I don't even want to have this conversation. You dipped on me. You bounced on me. You left. So anyways, it's a wrap. And he was like, I don't even want to talk. I don't want to do nothing. He goes upstairs. And why is Joy at the house? Why is she at the house to tell Trick why she left? You know what I mean? If she really want a divorce from him and she don't love him no more, she don't need to explain to him why she leaves. She needs to hand him them the divorce paper and say, hey, sign. And maybe Trick don't want to sign the divorce papers because she's probably going to get some of his property. So we'll see what happens with that situation. But it seems like next episode is going to get good. And we'll see what happens. Peace. I'm out. One love.